hockey. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite, it's Judd's Hockey Show. And welcome in to Judd's Hockey Show. That's right, the Tuesday edition, which means it's Judd, it's AJ, and Jesse Pierce, Bar Down Beauty's fame. Um, actually, Jesse, a live recording on Tuesday night at Tom Reed's. Is that right? That is right. A pregame to the Minnesota Wild puck drop at 6 p.m. in Pittsburgh uh, at Tom Reed's. So obviously they'll have the game going on. We've got trivia. We've got giveaways, uh, some signed merch as well. So come on down if you're looking to grab a beer, grab a drink or a you know, drink, food, all that good stuff. Yeah, all drinks. Yeah, beers. Yeah, beers, absolutely. All of it. Yeah, yeah. why not? Hockey? You can't go wrong. Um, So, in fact, speaking of can't go wrong, the Wild is 5-1-2. and Uh, They play, as Jess said, tonight, again, Tuesday night uh, in Pittsburgh. It will be Marc-Andre Fleury's last start there. We'll talk about that. They lost on Saturday, but 5-1-2 and is a great start. Before we start, let's let's give a shout-out, or I should say specifically, I want to talk to you grill masters out there for a shout out to Stoked Barbecue Pellets, a company based and operated right here in our great state. Stoked is the premium pellet that cooks anything you throw on the grill or smoker to delicious perfection. You can find Stoked at all 22 Fratelloni's hardware and garden stores, perfect for pellet grills, pellet smokers, and just about all grills. You can find Stoked Barbecue Pellets, 50 count fire starter buckets, four count fire starter bags, and barbecue caddies. Again, available at uh, all 22 Fratelloni hardware and garden stores, or check out their website, Stoked, S-T-O-A-K-E-D, bbq.com don't go with the big guys go with stoked all right as things stand right now the game on saturday was ugly but look if you're you're gonna lose those games they didn't play well the flyers are weird too overall though jesse pierce what is your impression what is your confidence now your your feelings about a team that is off to a impressive start, including back-to-back wins in Florida against the defending Stanley Cup champion Panthers, and then for the first time rallying to beat the Lightning in Tampa. It's just that. It's the rally. It's the continued fight. Even in Philadelphia, where it was an ugly game from both sides of the ice, I thought the way that they came back and the way that they were scoring and didn't really give up bodes well because you saw the beginning of – this season, it was the first period was their period. That was their bread and butter. And then they'd kind of start to falter a little bit in the second. But now you're seeing that second half of the game. So we're close, guys. We are close to a 60-minute game, a complete yep. game. Yep. Uh, but I like it. I mean, you're getting good goaltending, as we've discussed from Philip Gustafson. What I really like, though, you're seeing some of that scoring depth. You're seeing the first and second line really start to click. Marcus Felino had a really good game for that third line in Philadelphia. You're seeing him get back to his level of play. So I like it. It's still too small of a sample size for me to be like, let's go. We're all here. Um, but I mean, they're playing, obviously, much, much better than we maybe expected them to and far better than last year, putting themselves in a good position. Third last I checked in the Central. So I like it. I dig it. Uh, keep it rolling here as they close out this road trip tonight before they come back home for a couple. Mm-hmm. Age? Yeah, teams are going to have off nights, but I the, yeah. the, I guess the reoccurring phrase that I think, Judd, you've said over the past couple of shows is, is a professional performance. And a lot of these, besides Saturday, frankly, uh, have been professional performances against teams that I would not expect them to look as good against. It's been... Uh, it, it's been very, I, I I don't know the term I'm looking for, but um, it's been uplifting. I'm not sure. It's making me confident in them. I'm 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 yeah. I'm I, I'm. It's making me confident that when they have a tough test, they're probably going to rise to the occasion. Um, we can see that obviously they might be able to uh, lower to the occasion as well, like against the Flyers. But it's a long road trip. I expected a performance like that or two here on that type of road trip. So it's just unfortunate it comes against an opponent like that, and the score was. Uh, you know, 12 goal total, but it when, when it, it's making me very confident that when they come back to Minnesota and they're back inside the XL Energy Center, that they're probably going to continue these types of performances. I hope they can do so against the uh, the Pittsburgh Kent Penguins tonight, which what which should be a very emotionally charged evening with Mark yeah. Andre Fleury set to uh, be in the crease for the Wild. His last game uh, in front of a Pittsburgh crowd, barring some sort of miraculous Stanley Cup final. Uh, um, I, I'm excited for this team. They're giving me a lot of confidence that they can make uh, this first couple months and put themselves in a position where they're not playing from behind as much as they are in a spot where they have a little bit of wiggle room to work with. They can drop a game here or there, and it doesn't feel like it's probably the end of the world and the sky is falling. So I like this start. They're making me uh, very happy with this club. 
Among the things that I like the most, guys, is this. Matt Zuccarello is shooting the puck. Mm-hmm. Matt's it, clearly right. somebody, clearly he got a talking to. I'm sorry. I don't think that he just changed. But but Matt's has four goals, four assists, eight points thus far. But his 18 shots on goal are third on the team. Boldy, 29, who, by, who, by the way, I love. He's I think mm-hmm. he's doing great. Kaprizov, of course, 22. But Matt Zuccarello, Jesse, how long have we called for this? Because he can shoot. He can score. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there have been times where his insistence, and he can pass really well, but there have been times his insistence on passing or passing up shots has been maddening. Right. I think this is a huge step if he continues to shoot. And look, if Kirill sets him up, that's fine. Kirill can pass too. But I think that this is one of the most important things that has transpired thus far. And I don't know if it's John Hines thing. I don't know exactly where it came from, but Zuccarello shooting is a different player. He's not a player I'm dying to trade then. He can stick around if he shoots and he is shooting the puck. I mean, you can't score a goal if you don't take a shot, right? It's as simple as that. It's (laughs) it's so mind boggling. He didn't No, but I think it is. I think it's because there's been this emphasis on the need to get these wins, the need to put the puck in the back of the net. This team, I think, is making that shift, and I at least I hope, but it seems like they're making a much more offensive shift. They've been trying to do that push for the past season or two, especially with Kirill there, but now, like you said, Matt Boldy really getting that confidence. Jewel, Eric Sinek, I mean, getting contributors from outside. I can't wait till Liam Ogren starts to find his game because I don't think we've seen that just yet. I think he'll be up on the score sheet quite a bit. Uh, but yeah, that starts with Matt's too. I mean, there's no reason you shouldn't be taking the shots when you're close in when you're cutting through you don't need to do a behind the back pass to Kirill in order for it to be finished you're able to do that right like it looks pretty and fine and well but take the shot man I mean get the easy goal there get the layup so I'm loving it again I think that needs to continue I mean this is a league now where you need goals goals matter it's not the defensive shut down league it once was people are going to outscore you just by pace alone so Matt Zuccarello contributing bravo good sir bravo and Minnesota continues to squeeze some of the best years out of Matt Zuccarello. It's always surprising each, yeah, uh, each. I just season. love this yeah. age. I love this. I love the fact oh that God. the old man is shooting the puck and, and by, by the way, he's good. It goes in like, that's the thing about it. It's not like, what are you doing? It's like, Oh, and, and if he shoots, I think it makes Kirill a better player because now Kirill becomes more of a threat because now you're the coverages in the defensive zone for the opponent aren't as simple. So and like to your point, he's when he shoots, like he has a good shot. He knows yeah. how to beat the goalie. He's fourth on the team right now in shooting percentage behind. Uh, weirdly, it's always high. Marcus Foligno at 50%. He's That's got just like me- four shots all year and they, and two of them, I think beat, uh, beat the, the uh, Flyers he, goaltender. He, he picks the spots, I guess. Uh, Jewel yeah. Erickson has 25%. Marco Rossi third on the team with 23.1%. And then it's Matt Zuccarello in fourth with 22.2%. And that's with a high volume of shots. He should be shooting more like this for the entire season. The fact that we haven't gotten this. So whether there's been a conversation, whether Kirill maybe said, hey, I'm I'm feeding you just as well as you're feeding me. One of us actually has to shoot. And that that is why we are seeing these guys actually paired together instead of a forced Matt Boldy on the top. And it's that juggernaut line like we see on the power play. It's working. Keep shooting the puck. I'm loving Matt Zuccarello, who's not afraid to put the puck on net. Mm-hmm. Marco Rossi. So we, we talked about, and I think it was like two games in, the, the fact that we wanted to see more. We've seen that now. Mm-hmm. This first line right now, I think best case. Like this is why Marco Rossi deserves that role. Um, he might not be a dominant player but he, he's at uh three goals seven points a lot of points of late i think that this is why i did not want to see hartman get the top line because i think that there is a, a sustainability and rossi deserves the confidence that's been shown and jesse i think he's been great of late um there are, are certainly areas to improve there always will be but that being said I think if I told you that uh, that the Wild was off to a 5-1-2 and two start and that Rossi in that time would have three goals, seven points, centering the first line, we would all say, we'll take that. This is what we wanted. 
Yeah. I mean, he has been fairly consistent, which I think was the big thing for his game. I mean, you wanted to see him expound on what he achieved last season and putting him on the third line wasn't going to give him that opportunity. Getting him up with players that are of his skill level, of his speed, is what you needed to do. And I love the three of them together. He's like the plate. And Matt Zuccarello's like the teacup, and then Kirill's the tea. That's probably a terrible one. AJ, you would have had a far better one, but that's all wow, I can keep thinking of. Yeah. I, I gotta digest you need that. You need all three. I don't love yeah, it. Yeah, of course. I don't love it, but, you know, it's there. Yeah. They're my cup of tea. Ha, huh, there yeah. we go. Rounded that one <laughs> there out. There you oh, go. Oh, boy. Okay, I gotta go. <laughs> Lunchtime for me. I, I gotta go. I pulled it back together a little bit. Yep, no, yep, but yeah, I do. I, I, I am thrilled for Marco Rossi again. He's worked so hard to get there. Um, and right now it's, it's clicking, it's jiving. That chemistry is, is fantastic. I can't picture him in a different role. Frankly, it just, it, it works well. Like you said, Judd, though, there are obviously small areas of improvement and that'll come, but so far we're loving it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, only cause it's in my head now. I would say that the Zuccarello Kaprizov is the, they're, they're a PB and J sandwich, right? Like they complement each other so well, but for the longest time, Ryan Hartman, it's like, all right, here's a Fanta to wash it down. That tastes disgusting. He is now the glass of milk. It's complimentary. It's it's gonna go down. And I know milk's not for everybody, but think about it as like you know, if you're if you're 12. lactose problems age. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah whatever. Um, yeah, Mar Marco Rossi. I, I'm glad that it was a you know just a slow start for those first couple of games where maybe he was like, this is actually my job. I am the number one center. Maybe it was a bit overwhelming, but I think he's really settled in. You're seeing a different level of confidence, I feel like, too. He's not as feeble, maybe just like each shift. He's I'm I'm seeing him and I I'm not a great lip reader, but he's talking at like the face off dot. He's, he's getting in the he's getting in the face of the officials, like, hey, let's go, drop the puck, or like back up to the opposition center. He has a little bit more of a swagger, he's got a little more of an edge to him, it seems, and he, he needs that for his size and his stature. I know he's put in the work in the off season, but that can only take you so far. The attitude I think has now kind of caught up. I'm really excited. I think he's settled in just fine and he's doing, I think a better job than a lot of people were expecting a couple months ago. Like Judd said, if you said this is where he was a right. week or so um, a month into the season, I would be more than happy. And I think that uh, it only means it's going to continue to trend in the right direction. Third line as well. It makes sense now. And it works. Mm -hmm. Felino Trennan, who I don't love like, I don't see a lot of there there, but but he's okay there. Mm -hmm. Goudreau's actually found a home now. Mm -hmm. I think this and and he has not uh, been rewarded with uh, with goals yet, but Goudreau actually is in on chances now. Like like you can see a yeah. spark start to come back. But let me take you through the the Felino hits, okay? So because this to me, if I recall correctly, Jesse, when when we started the season there were some games there where he was not involved much yeah. and i'm like Mar marcus you are here yes to have a high shooting percentage but more importantly to get hits um he had three against the flyers okay but he had seven in tampa bay and that line with trennan and goudreau had 11 hits in that game mm -hmm. this is what i want from them like this is the grinding this is the and and yes They'll create some chances and score, and that's awesome. But I don't think that they're going to create those chances and score unless they start off from a point of playing a physical game and working hard. And so, like, as we've gone through these line machinations, right, and been like, why is this guy here? Is why is it? It's starting to all make sense now. Like, Rossi is where he probably belongs, and Goudreau, who we don't love but can have a role, I guess, it feels like he is the ideal center with Hartman out, which could provide a problem, but I just really like what Felino, Goudreau, and Trennan have provided. Yeah, I mean, the one thing that we can say about Freddie Goudreau, and we've never knocked him for this, is his work ethic, right? He is out there uh -huh. trying and hustling, and that's why that works so well on the line. Plus, he's the most skilled on that line, frankly, as far as stick handling yeah. and shooting goes, right? So, I mean, he can yeah. apply that a little bit. Trennan continues to frustrate me. I'm just not seeing anything. There's really just very little. He's upped his pace a bit. I don't know if he's been listening to this fine show because he's not looking as sluggish as prior, does. but even that's not. Yeah, right. Hey, Marcus. <laughs> Hi, Mrs. Marcus. Kids. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Oh, oh boy. Nice family. He's a great yeah. guy. Great guy. Fantastic guy. Love I'm it. Not, but I'm not. 
they're all good Beat people most yeah no they are but yeah oh, that's, pro, I pro mean, athletes that's I we could probably go through that but we won't we won't but mark is a good guy but um no I'm i think that's why freddie freddie works there i do i i like yeah. it you're right when hartman comes back from whatever's ailing him it'll be interesting but it works i mean i think hartman wouldn't have a problem necessarily being on that fourth line either and plugging in there for a minute so we'll see but is that your uh so if he goes to the fourth line who comes off the fourth you. line then jess because lauko's playing well i, like I need marat and liam to get but this is goes back to problem but now it's at least a good problem because you are seeing marcus johansson be yeah. viable right like you're seeing him do yes. something so i yes. don't think he needs to be knocked down for that so no. it's a good problem to have um again i would say liam Ogren probably turns into the odd man out there uh just based on youth but he and we still haven't seen a lot from him to make him fight for that chance either right like he's been okay um but that he's not been as so serviceable tough, it is it's a tough but that but, fourth line is a tough role for a young kid like sure. like you don't really yeah. get much chance because you're grinding which right. is which is your job on the fourth yep. line yeah but I think I'd, I'd rather have Lauko in. I like what Lauko's been bringing Agreed. as far as his, his zippiness. So Here's yeah. one question. Do you consider, when Hartman comes back, do you consider Hartman on the wing on for Trennan or on a fourth-line wing and just not at center? Because he can yeah, play the wing. He can play the wing, right. Yeah, I would say so. And maybe get that through to Yakov kind of a little... I'm with you. What's going on here? I just don't Are you saying there Yakov, there. does Yakov come out or yeah. does he just slot yeah. down? No, he goes in the press box. Why oh, no, I think he's you want him I think down? in their, I, no, I think in their I world, in the he slots down. No, I box. think you nailed it. I think o Ogren, I think there's a fighting chance he's back in Des Moines. I don't yeah. love that, but like he's playing fourth line minutes. Like that's not. The, the goal for him is not fourth line minutes Correct. like in a year or two. So it's similar. I mean, they they kept Boldy, and it felt like Rossi down there for quite a while to get him to get the, uh, those guys like the the role and get them those types of top tier minutes, top six minutes. I would rather have Ogren doing that if it means he gets minutes rather than the you know eight to twelve he may get potentially on the fourth line with the big club. Well, and more importantly, it gives him that confidence that he's going to need. He's a guy that's used to yeah. finding his way onto a score sheet. So I imagine it's not great for your confidence to be struggling a little bit. So, yeah, I think um, going down there and, and getting that boost is always nice, too. I'm going to paint a picture here, okay? It just came to me okay, because I think it's inevitable. Uh, and, and it actually is a reason to send Ogren down and get him on the first line there uh, than staying here. Jesse, you're exactly right. Marcus Johansson's actually playing hard. Like, like he's actually working. Inevitably, be, when he does that, he gets hurt. So, and I'm not trying to be a jerk here. I'm just saying he's, he gets hurt. Like, like if, I think there's a reason why when he's not going well, he just falls because he doesn't get hurt if he just falls. It, he gets hurt when he goes into the corners, blah, blah, blah. So, I would rather have Hartman on the fourth line wing, for instance, or Trennan. Ogren down when Johansson inevitably gets hurt. Ogren comes up and plays second line wing. But he's been getting playing time then an offensive top six, top three role. Make sense? Mm -hmm. I just don't think Johansson, it just feels to me, at least his his time, his two stints here, when he when he's going well, something always happens, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't hate it. I don't know that that will happen just in regard to putting Ogren up that high yet, but it would depend greatly on how he does in Iowa too, right? Correct. Like if he that's does, what I'm saying. That's the other thing. Yeah, I I like it. I think it's a it is a it's a near Picasso, maybe a Monet. We we've, we've done nothing but give these people ideas. We do. Maybe I a really Warhol. like this literally and they Warhol. all watch the show. We all know that that they watch the show. Right. So the Felinos can actually take this John might not. Heinz yeah. might not. So if somebody could please take this but and I'm not um, again. Garen, Garen, obviously, we I, we should just hand the, every episode yeah. to him and be like. And hey, I'm not we, trying to be a jerk. Planned your game out for this. Week. Johansson gets hurt. Age, he just gets hurt. He does. It's gonna He's happen. A frail to human. Yeah, I would be. Don't spit out that drink. A frail human, my goodness. He's a frail human. He just is frail. It's okay. Let me ask you this: Do you think, like, depending on performance wise, because if he goes, if Ogren goes down and plays top six minutes, and he's on the score sheet every other night. And it yep. seems like, okay, it's almost an automatic thing. He's creating chances. Then yeah, he probably does. And there's a better case for him to come back up and slot in immediately where that Johansson spot and vacancy is. But maybe it's kind of like a, 
okay, you're not really getting the wheels churning. There's a couple good nights, but also you're struggling. Do you? Th I would think that maybe a Lauco moves up from that fourth line just because of solely the speed. They've talked about how much they love Johansson's speed. He's already on that left side. Ogren might slot back in there. So I think that's the if or the other, not an automatic Ogren slots in there. I, I think there's a a decent chance that it would be a Jacob Lauko or ya is it Jakob? Yeah, technically, but he, like most of the overseas players, they're like, oh, say it because you Americans care. can't say it the way okay. that I want you to. But it's supposed to be Jakob. But it's, okay, well, he, like, he doesn't mind Jacob. What a con what a great condescending way to give you <laughs> yeah. permission to mispronounce his name. <laughs> They've all said you that. Americans. Jesper said that. Like, there's a Granlund, I think, has said that before. Like, there's a bunch of those well, guys that are like, well, you can't say it correctly. Grant Granlund, years ago, I, I think it was during the playoffs, if you guys recall, gave Doc Emmerich. The correct pronunciation of Gronlin. Gronlin, yeah. And so Doc is like Gronlin, and everyone's like, "What are you talking about?" And he's like, "Look, I asked him." And then they went to Gronlin, and he's like, "Don't, ah, don't even bother with that. <laughs> Just call me Gronlin." <laughs> oh but man. You know Doc because he's the a perfectionist. The best. He's, I mean, he's yeah. phenomenal, right? He's Gronlin and Gronlin, and we're all like, mm -hmm. "What's he doing?" Sashes <laughs> through. And and yeah, so it's it's Jesper Volstead, right? Right. Yeah. But he said you can just say Jesper. Wallstead. Oh, and we're like, that's well, no. easy. That's enough. given. Yeah, I was going to say Jacob, Yaka. I mean, I mean, I'm fine with whatever, unless you just say I can't say it right regardless. Mm -hmm. In which case, then, yeah, I'll just say Jacob. Yeah. Right. Exactly. All right. So this was a long way of me saying, I think, Jacob. Lauko. Yaka, I think you might be on, Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, he, is the skill there? Probably not. That's what but, I was going to say. But the, but the speed is, and I think that puts him in a lot better position to thrive than potentially a struggling, yes. hasn't quite found his professional footing, Liam Ogren. Would you yeah. be would you be Peter principling him by by shooting him through the ceiling? Like he's really good right now. Yeah. Um like like o Ogren has a lot of potential we don't know, right? I think a higher ceiling than anything. Way higher. Yes. But my point is Lauko, if you put him on the second line, are you suddenly now maxing him out on minutes and and now he's in a role where his, you know, his back and forth in Boston to the AHL to the Bruins and back and forth, we get to see that experience, which you don't want necessarily. Like, that's the thing is, I feel like people right now are actually being slotted in really well to what they deserve. Yeah. Yeah. And I would don't say it's see been a, that. And it's been a pleasant surprise for Lauko, I think, so far, because I didn't Agreed. expect to be as, uh, as pleased by his play as I am. Agreed. I would rather give him a chance to pleasantly surprise me again and then maybe okay I, that was a mistake that was one game it was against the blue jackets we can live with yeah. that poor performance go back to the fourth line now we can slot in Ogren up top or something yeah i would agree oh, okay. i'm all for giving it a shot right if you need to right now like judd said the players are kind of where they need to be which is why you're seeing the success right it just it's working it's everything all four lines are kind of playing their part, which I think is important, but I don't have a problem trying it if they need to mix something up. I'm all for shaking it up, toss them in the, the blender, see what happens, see what comes see, out. Cause if it's not working, it's not working. I mean, yeah, I do agree with that, but what I don't like to like, like when Dean with Goudreau, right. He would be like, phrase my guy. So if he starts playing well, I'm going to have him do this and do that. It's like, no, he's got a role, dude. Like you might, you might love him like a son, but he's got a role here. And you know, he, he would, he would shoot him way beyond what, what he should. And then it'd be like, he's struggling. Why is he struggling? Well, because you basically are giving him too much playing time and he doesn't, you know, Marco Rossi at the end of the day can keep up with Kaprizov and Zuccarello. And so you're like, okay, he's not a finished product yet, but he can keep up. Uh, I understand that coaches have allegiances and I think that people that work hard should be rewarded, but I don't think that they should ascend to a place where now they are actually counterproductive because you thought I like that guy and he deserves, you know, some guys are fourth liners. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. To your point, Ogren is not. The question is, how do you get him up? And it's probably not go going to, to be it until uh, either A, Johansson gets hurt, or B, till next year. Well, um, you can hey, mask those mistakes down there, right? On the fourth line, at least you can kind of cover Yeah, up well, you're not playing as much. So you safety in them. You are grinding a lot, though. Like, like the, yeah. the, the Ogren problem, the conundrum is we're never, we're not going to see what he can do down there. We're just right. not. Like, he's grinding, he's checking. That's their job. But and I do like the fact that that line is actually somewhat skilled, though. 
you know, who who's yeah. has skill. It's not like mm-hmm. he's this complete slappy. So, uh, hey, we do have to talk about special teams, but before we do, do that, I want to talk to you about my friends at Park Tavern. Of course, the official sports bar of Sports Dad. Watch all the games of Park Tavern located at Highway 7 and Louisiana Avenue South, right here in my neck of the woods in St. Louis Park. Uh, I want to draw attention to their late night happy hour, eight to close every night in October. Happy hour, eight to close every night. That includes $1 off drinks, $2 off pitchers, food specials as well. So show up, watch the games, the Wild, the Vikings, the Wolves, all types of games. Uh, check those games out at Park Tavern. Again, official sports bar of Sports Dad, located at Highway 7, Louisiana Avenue South, St. Louis Park. Also, draw, draw your attention to, speaking of watching the games, Roku Giveaway. That's right. Right now on the Score North app, you can win a 75-inch Roku Pro Series Smart TV and wall mount. Just use the Score North app to register, kick off, and kick back with a new TV this holiday season from Roku all from the best seat in, in the house, which, of course, is your couch. That's on the Score North app under Listener Rewards. The Score North app under Listener Rewards. Our friends at Roku want to give you a great viewing experience, whether that be sports, m- movies, streaming shows. Yes, all of those good things. All right, let's talk about the special teams. Uh, let's start with the good, the power play. Power play looks really good. I sort of like the fact that we're not worrying a lot about the second group because when i see them i'm like really on a power play first group looks great though um when i looked this up yesterday the wild fifth in the fifth in the national hockey league in power play uh 30.8 percent uh that is up from 22.7 percent for 2023 24 how much do we like what we're seeing from a group at least that first group that can really move the puck and zuccarello shooting makes a difference on the power play as well. Well, it's incredible. Like Zuccarello, I think, had a 68.1% shooting last year on the power play, and now that's increased. And they're high danger opportunities. That first unit is stacked. I mean, when you're looking at Kirill, Mats, Eck, Boldy, and Faber, I mean, that's you don't want to go against that. The second unit's serviceable. Um, again, not seeing a whole lot, but it just it feels weird, right? Johansson and Rossi and Goodrow. Serviceable, and- so... Yeah, serviceable is a good word, good term, yeah. but they're yeah. they're seeing production. No, I think it's it's huge. There's a lot of good breakouts as well, um, and you've got your outlets. I I like it. I love it. Fifth in the league, as you mentioned, that's the last I saw as well. PK, not. That's what we. Yeah, that's what we yeah. were going to get to next. Uh, okay, so <laughs> the PK right now. Um, here's the sad thing. Right now, percentage wise, it's down from what it ended last year at. At 74.5%, which if I'm not mistaken, was third to last in the entire league. The PK is 26th in the league, or was yesterday, 73.3%. Um, small sample size. I will say that. We're not a long way, obviously, into the season. But, Age, I'll start with you. What is your takeaway that thus far on a unit that this team made a coaching change, assistant coaching change, uh, went to great lengths to correct and what has not been corrected so far. I think they're getting really fortunate that the power play is carrying that side of things as much as they are, because I I, I feel like we would daily be lighting up this penalty kill unit if they weren't producing anything. That being said, on one side of the, thi- uh, of the argument, you're going to say, well, they could be 62.1% success rate like the Edmonton <clears throat> Oilers dead last in the league yeah. to which I will say how about on the other side almost 20 points higher Nashville and Dallas both sitting at a very comfortable 93.1 percent PK Darby. that is that is insane um 73.3 is it's not great like, but there's nothing I, else working for Nashville so really we can take that solace right like there's at least that <laughs> what if Darby's in charge of the PK oh. and he's gonna and now he's doing a great job you're like what happened I forgot about that. That's a good, oh, yeah. Darby Hendrickson. I like that, yeah. But yeah, the Preds are, oh, they're off to a rough start. Yeah. Um, but Jesse, you're, it, yeah, so, I'm, no, you know, it, it, it's, it's disappointing. It's, an, it's very disappointing. It's some sort of ship needs to be corrected here because I think we expected, based on what, we, what we've seen with the power play, like, obviously, they're putting in work and stuff is working on that side of things. Why is it not the same thing on the penalty kill? Is, are people not 
playing their roles correctly? Is it not buying in? Is the scheme in, in, like just totally wrong? Like what is the exact issue that they keep failing at this? It seems like night in, night out. Is it Jared Spurgeon? I was going to Right? Yep. Like, I mean, that could certainly be one. It sounds like he might be returning tonight, but I think that's probably an aspect that we're overlooking as well as he's missed a handful of games now. And maybe that's why the PK is struggling. The good news is I think the reason you're seeing still that uptick is not only getting Jack Cap Cappuccino in. I'm sorry. I don't know how to say his last Capuano. name. <laughs> Capuano. Well, Cappuccino is great. He, he's frothy. He's a frothy oh. coach. I like practiced it in my head before I said it. And I, I know like, no, I've got names like that. Still not gonna get it. Still not. Lauco, I cannot get. Lauco, I, see, I, I cannot get. get. I want to say low cow every time. I'm better at like harder <laughs> ones than like simple. Anyway, um, Jack, Coach Jack, I think he still maybe hasn't been able to get his full fingerprints on it either. It is it's early, but back to the good goaltending. At least your your best penalty killers are your goalies, and yeah. you're getting some help there too. But yeah, I think they still have a, a ways to go for some big improvement and hopefully Jared Spurgeon can help that a little bit. Okay. Last thing thoughts on, on Mark Andre Fleury last game in Pittsburgh. It's a great story. Uh, what 16 years there went, then got claimed by the golden Knights in, in the expansion draft some time with the Blackhawks. And now here your thoughts though, on a guy who is a, a hall of fame, as far as I can tell person and player, uh, getting one last start. It's not at the place he played, a, a, you know, his entire career because he played the beginning of his career with the Penguins across the street at the Civic Arena. Uh, but certainly if Pittsburgh has hockey heroes, Lemieux's up there, Crosby, right? But Flurry is probably, I mean, he he's on the Mount Rushmore, I think is fair to say, of hockey heroes in Pittsburgh. I mean, you'll see his jersey in the ra i mean in the rafters there as well in pittsburgh i think he's just so beloved it's hard not to again the the way that we've seen him just the past couple seasons he spent 13 years there in pittsburgh they absolutely adore 13. him you'll still Thank see you. the 29s you know roaming around i i love it i hope i want nothing but good things for mark andre Fleury because he is such a good human being mm -hmm. i'm sure you guys saw he jumped on the ice with pittsburgh kids yesterday during practice and it's funny because he didn't play in pittsburgh last year right when it could have been his last year and he hates this fan fear. He truly does. Like he wants to just go out there and play and have fun. And to him, it's still just kind of a kid's game. So I want, I want, uh, I'm not going to say the word because it's, it's blasphemy to say it, but I want that, that, that big goose egg for him. Yep. I do. I want that tonight because he deserves it. And I don't even think Pittsburgh fans would be mad. You know what? Pittsburgh, no, I think they'd he, cheer. He, yeah. Like, I, I think they'd love it too. And they're I, not that good. I want that. No, they're not like, they're it's, not. it's not like they're that good, but, but the problem is, the Flyers look like they stink as well. And so, like, it's just yeah. a, a weird sport. Age, your thoughts on the flower? Um, I, I would say when it comes to, like, his legacy there, do you think he gets a statue at the end of the day? As long as like, it looks better than Dwayne Wade. Oh, my <laughs> God. Dwayne Wade terrible. likes the statue. How does he? He, he looks does at that not. statue. He, he does he not. Looked at the, he looked at that statue and signed off on it. That is horrific. I don't know how you do that. that was how terrible. do you... It's been done before badly, so he's not the first guy, but it's an awful statue. Oh, it's terrible. I th I, <laughs> I think if Flower gets one, does he get one like incorporated with Sid and Gino? Or I, my yeah. my standout thing is the the save I think against the Red Wings, like in the dying seconds uh, to secure the the Stanley Cup win. But it's gonna be emotional tonight. Um, I'm most looking forward to seeing whatever behind the scenes prank. He pulls because there's no shot. He goes to Pittsburgh in the final, like all this fanfare and just like, yep, I'm just going to go through the motions. He, he might like burn down their locker room and like, ha super funny. Um, <laughs> he's going to go. He's, he's got gonna a go weird dark out. side with, with those gags. <laughs> he's going to go all out and I can't wait to see who the victim is. But um, oh, I mean, it, this is going to be a very, like one of the times where the storyline that gets mentioned throughout the game, I won't get sick of. You know, right. sometimes it's like, you know, somebody returns after a long injury and it's like, yeah, we get it. He he was out for a while. Like, it's the third period now. I don't need to keep hearing. This is something I want to see every highlight, every video montage. Um, I really hope he, one, enjoys the night and two, the Wild put up a decent enough, uh, a decent enough performance in front of him because we've seen them at certain times for whatever goalie, whether it's Wallstead in his debut or other times throughout the, the course of the franchise where they just kind of fall flat. 
-hmm. in very big moments. This is a game where they need to finish out this very long road trip with a bang. Like I want to see an early goal so he can coast to a win on uh, on road road ice. Do we get? Well, let's say that the Wilds up by uh, two or three late. Too late. Penguins pull their goaltender. Do, it. Do we get a Mark Andre Fleury shot at the Penguins goal? Felino's gonna pass him the puck. Right. They, they're gonna force that. Right. You have to. I mean, I'd and love how to see incredible it. would that be that you have both it. your Minnesota Wild tendies with goalie goals on the season? Not only is it something that Mark Andre Fleury is the only thing he hasn't achieved yet, a but just too. to have both of them in the fight too. That's right. I gotta have a fight. I gotta have a goalie fight for him. I mean. Yeah. He was wrong. Bennington. It's got to happen. Yeah. Ben, Bennington will oblige in his final year. It'll happen yeah. at some point. That linesman owes everyone an apology. That's the worst break. Those linesmen, <laughs> that's the worst breakup of all time. Two guys that were that won to fight. It's a goalie fight. No one's going to get hurt, and they break it up. Deprived. They deprived us They of did. Greatness. They deprived Flower. They deprived us. I hate it. All right, guys. That's it. Uh, just We'll talk to you next uh, Tuesday. If you are watching this uh, before Tuesday evening, don't forget, Jesse uh, will be taking the bar down beauties with Kirsten on the road to Tom Reed's Hockey City Pub. AJ, I'm Judd. We'll talk to you soon.